Hey guys, let's see if we can run through this derivatives of polynomials and power functions. And as we do that, let's just see if we can look at linear functions really quickly. So linear functions, you know, y equals mx plus b. If we thought about the derivative of that function, then we could say that f prime of x is always going to be equal to m. Because if we had a line, then no matter where I am on that line, the slope of the tangent line is going to be the same. So the slope is the same no matter where we are, and it's always a slope of m. Similarly, kind of constant functions, so if I had a function where you know, y is equal to c, no matter where I am on that line, a constant function is a horizontal line. So the slope of that line is going to be equal to 0 no matter where we are on that on that constant function. We have this power rule which is going to up until now we've been using the definition of the derivative and this is going to save us some time because as we saw as those exponents get larger those those uh, computations become a little bit more complex. So we have this this power rule which is going to help us save some time in that where if I want to find the derivative, if I have a number times x to the n, where n is a power, like 2, 3, it could be fractional or negative, but it's a, it's a number that's up there, then the derivative is that exponent times that original coefficient, and then x to the n minus 1. So we subtract 1 from the exponent. And just a real quick uh, look at that in practice, if I had like f of x is equal to 3x to the fourth. So the derivative of that function, f prime of x, will be equal to, we can take that exponent and multiply it by the coefficient. So 4 times 3, 12x to the, and then now when we subtract 1 from that exponent, 4 minus 1 is 3. So it saves us some time in having, when we do that definition of the derivative. Then I have the sum and difference, where if my function is made up of a composite of f of x plus g of x, so I'm adding two different functions together, then the derivative of that original function is the sum of the derivatives of the little pieces. So the derivative of that first function plus the derivative of that second function. And then for differences, it's the same thing. We can just subtract the derivatives. And we'll see where that comes into play in this first example. So what we're trying to do is, we're trying to write the equation of the line that's tangent to h when x is equal to 1. So if x is equal to 1, what would the equation of that tangent line be? The two things I need to write the equation of a line are a point and a slope. For all of this, we know that x is equal to 1. So if I want to find my point, I need to go to... Uh, h of x, so h of 1, is equal to 3 times 1 squared minus 2 times 1 plus 2. 3 minus 2 plus 2 is equal to 1 plus 2, which is 3. So my point is 1, 3. And now to find the slope, we need to know what is the derivative. So what is the derivative of h of x. And that's where those kind of sum and differences come into play. So I'm going to look at all of these pieces individually. And this first piece, we've got 2 times 3, which is 6, x to the 2 minus 1 is 1. So 6x to the first. And then this is just kind of a linear function embedded in there. So it's negative 2x. Uh, so minus 2, and then this is a constant function here, so this is going to have a slope of 0, so I get 6x minus 2. This is going to have a slope of negative 2, and then I guess this is going to have a slope of 6x. So that's where that like sum and difference come into play, is that I can just look at the little pieces individually and find the derivative of those individual pieces. So we still need to evaluate this when x is equal to 1. So h prime of 1 is equal to 6 times 1 minus 2, 6 minus 2 is equal to 4. And now that I have my point and my slope, we can write the equation of the line y minus is equal to m times x minus, where the y value of the point on the line was 3, the x value of the point on the line was 1, and then the slope at that point is 4. So we wrote the equation of that line there.
We're going to have to deal with some fractional and negative exponents, and these next examples deal with all of that. So I have 5x to the fourth, and I have 1 over x squared. Whenever we see something where we have uh, exponents in the denominator, we first want to rewrite our function so that we don't have any exponents in the denominator, and the way that we're going to do that is using uh, negative exponents. So we get 5x to the fourth plus... And remember that we can bring this up to the numerator by changing that exponent to a negative. So we can have 5x to the fourth plus x to the negative 2. That makes it a little bit easier for us to use our power rule. When we go to find the derivative, 4 times 5 is 20, x minus 1, x to the third. And now we can use the power rule here, too, that we've taken it out of the denominator. So we have minus 2 x, because if we thought about that as being a 1, negative 2, and then subtract 1, we get uh, to the negative 3. And so f prime of x is equal to 20x cubed minus 2 over x to the third. Now notice that this, this 2 doesn't go down with it, it's just this that goes down to the denominator. Okay, this is a big one, and it's probably one that we're going to end up committing to memory. Um, but as of right now, we don't have a way to, to take the derivative of a radical function. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite f of x using fractional exponents. So we can write the square root of x as x to the one-half. So the square root of x and x to the one-half are, are equivalent. One's just a radical and one's using uh, exponents, a power function. Now, using our new power rule we can say that the derivative of this is equal to 1 half times 1 x to the and now when we subtract 1 since the denominator was 2 I'm going to subtract 2 over 2 so I already have a common denominator 1 minus 2 in the numerator gives me negative 1 and then I keep the denominator f prime of x is equal to 1 over 2 times x to the 1 half which we could then say f prime of x is equal to 1 over 2 square roots of x. We did do that in the classwork uh, using the definition of the derivative. We should have noticed that we got 1 over 2 square roots of x. But I'm just going to kind of commit to memory that the square root of x has a derivative of 1 over 2 square roots of x. f of x equals, we're going to bring this up, so we have negative 2x to the negative 3, plus 3x to the 1 half, which we know how to find this using the power rule, so we're going to multiply, negative 2 times negative 3 is a positive 6, when I subtract 1 from that exponent, x to the negative 4, plus I'm going to just kind of commit that to memory, that the square root of x has a derivative of 1 over 2 square roots of x. So this is going to be 3 over 2 square roots of x. And if we really wanted to clean it up, we could say f prime of x is equal to 6 over x to the fourth plus 3 over 2 square roots of x. So by just knowing that one, it, it makes our lives a little bit easier when we go to find the derivative of the square root of x. Unfortunately, um, we don't know how to find the derivative of anything being multiplied together yet, so we're going to have to uh, think of this as 2 plus x, 2, that's a plus, x to the 1 half, and we're going to have to distribute this through. So we're going to have to rewrite f of x in this case as 2x to the 3 halves plus x to the, so if I had x to the 3 halves and I'm multiplying it by x to the 1 half, remember when we multiply powers of the same base, we add the exponents together. So I get x to the 3 halves plus 1 half, which is equal to 4 over 2, or 2. So the derivative of this, f prime of x, is going to be equal to... Uh, 3 halves times 2 is 3, 
x to the, let's subtract 2 over 2. I'm really subtracting 1, but my denominator is 2. x to the 1 half plus 2x to the first, because 2 times 1 and then minus 1. So f prime of x is equal to 3 square roots of x plus 2. We also don't know how to find the derivative of anything involving quotients yet, so products and quotients we don't know how to do uh, quite yet. We have to break this up into individual pieces. So I'm going to look at this as a piece, and when I divide powers of the same base, we subtract exponents. So f of x is equal to 2 minus 4 is x to the negative 2. And then plus 1 minus 4, x to the negative 3. So I'm subtracting those exponents. And then I also have this last piece here, x to the negative 4. So 1 over x to the 4th, we're going to rewrite as x to the negative 4. And now we can take the derivative, f prime of x is equal to, multiply, so negative 2, x to the subtract 1, negative 3, multiply. Um, so negative 3 times 1 is negative 3, x to the subtract 1, negative 4, multiply, negative 1 times negative 4 is plus 4, x to the negative 5, when we subtract 1 from the exponent. I'm not going to bother rewriting that as, as um, fractions, I'll just save some time here. Alright, and then kind of wrapping all of this up, um, oh goodness. Write the equation of the line tangent to g at x is equal to 4. So when x is equal to 4, we're at this point right here, and we're going to try and write the equation of that line that's tangent to it. So again, the two things that we need to write the equation of a line are a point and a slope. So g of 4 is equal to 2 times 4 to the 3 halves. When I evaluate fractional exponents, this is the power and this is the root. So the square root of 4 is 2, and then raise that to the third is 8. So g of 4 is equal to 2 times 8, which is 16. And we can see from the picture of the graph that it should be 16. So again, the square root of 4, which is that guy, is 2, and then 2 to the third is 8. And multiply that by 2 for 16. And we also need the slope. So the slope g prime of x is equal to, we're going to use our new power rule. So let's multiply that by 2. So 3 halves times 2 is 3x to the, subtract 1 from the exponent, 1 half. So g prime of x is equal to 3 times the square root of x. And now we want to evaluate this at 4. So 3 times the square root of 4, 3 times 2 is equal to 6. And we can write the equation of our line, y minus is equal to m times x minus, where the y value of the point is 16, the x value of the point is 4, and the slope at that point is 6. Alright guys, I know that I went really fast, so I was really trying to get that in there under 15 minutes, uh, so feel free to ask me any questions uh, when we come in tomorrow. I hope you have a good night.